Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. We, we haven't got him yet, but we will. Bob Grant is doing a program now on WMCA, the like show here. The same thing I do, same hours as a matter of fact. He's pretty controversial himself. And we're waiting to go on the air with him there. Is that what we're waiting to do? Fine. And we'll be talking to his audience, and he'll be talking to you, and we'll be trying to rally some support on this issue. And I hear him giving the weather forecast there. I hear him. He's doing something, anyway. And we'll wait till we get on the air with him. WMCA is one of the, is the big talk station in New York. I've done some work up there myself, and Bob and I are friends and, and colleagues in the, uh, in the field. I worked there weekends. I did some nighttime work there, of course, and so I'm, the audience is somewhat familiar with me and uh, Bob Grant, uh, we're trying to introduce to you as the top talk, t radio talk show host in New York City. Same hours, 2 to 6, and I prevailed upon him to... There he goes. Uh, eight and a half minutes now, past 4 o'clock here in New York and also in Boston. Hello, Bob Grant. Jerry Williams. How are you? Well, Jerry, I'm... Uh Getting a terrific response on uh, sending the messages to uh, Tip O'Neill. I'm glad you joined the crusade. And uh, before we go any further, I uh, want uh, your listeners, and I, uh, I guess they can hear me. Yes, they can. Uh, to know uh, that I think you are one of the few people, all too few people, in this medium with any real courage. And I salute you for it. Well, that's very kind. How come I'm broke? <laughs> Maybe because you got too much courage. <laughs> well, listen, here, here's what we've been doing. Let me give you an idea of what we've been doing. Can you hear me well in New York? Yes. Very okay. Uh, what we've been doing in New York is not just setting up the idea of whether who's for or against a pay raise. Obviously, most Americans are against the pay raise. I think that's quite clear. But this pay raise is going to start at 40, it start from the present level of 44000 goes to $57,000. And that's for the, for the members of the Congress. And in October, they'll get a regular increment of another 5 to 7%, which will be another $5,000, and pretty soon they'll be up to 62000 I think the thing that bugs most people is that nobody is going to be recorded on it. The Congressman O'Neill, who sits here right in this district, is, uh, is saying there will be no vote on it. Now, Congressman O'Neill, his office locally, has been what I would call somewhat snippy with our with us trying to get him on the air for a brief statement and uh, not too happy about what we're doing what we're doing is was uh, we're asking congressman thomas p o'neill the speaker of the house and the democratic leader simply to get the congress to vote a recorded vote if you tell the members of congress how to vote why that's not the issue the issue is if you're so brave vote on it just be recorded and you know bob that if these members of Congress are recorded on it, a good many of them will run for the hills. That's right, they will. Uh, when, now, what are you saying there? Well, the, everybody agrees with that. Most people are opposed, of course, to any raise. I talked to Phil Crane, one of the few people in the Congress. Uh, he's from Illinois. He's one of the few people in the Congress who's made any noise about this. And he points out that in 1968, uh, if the pay raises you speak of, Jerry, take place, that will mean a 100% pay increase since 1968 for members of Congress. And uh, he, uh, he said that even though he would like to have a voice vote under the rules, uh, there'll be no voice vote unless Speaker O'Neill uh, does something about it. He is the key to the whole thing. That is, if you get the Congress to vote, at least if they're that smart, if they're that... Uh, 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 if they're that... Um, uh, adamant about getting the raise, and most of them are. Uh, listen, record yourself, man, so that in two years from now, when people want to put forth the issue, you can't go around, Mr. Congressman, saying, uh, uh, well, listen, I didn't want to vote for it. We'll never know who, wa who was for it or again it. Never. All right. Now, Jerry, uh, how are your people addressing their mail? Because well, here's what they're doing, uh, Bob. We're addressing mail, and please tell the folks in New York, as, as I'm telling them now, not to get involved in the issue. There's only one issue here, and that is a vote. We want a roll call vote on the matter of the congressional pay raise, and it should go to Speaker Thomas P. O'Neill. Speaker Thomas P. O'Neill, House of Representatives, Washington, 20515. And it should be in the form of a letter or a mailgram, and they can call in New York, 
962-7111. That's in New York, 962-7111. In Boston, 482-1818 for a public opinion wire or mailgram. The public opinion wire costs $2 for 15 words or less, and all you have to do is say, Mr. Speaker, we want a roll call vote on the congressional pay raise. If he receives tomorrow from this phone call conversation 5,000, just 5,000 communications, that'll be like the Saturday Night Massacre. They won't know what hit them. Well, we've been, we've been trying to, for years, talk about the power of the people, how the people expressing themselves through this medium could have an impact, and now we have a real chance, but I have a very, I have a very pessimistic attitude about the people. They're lazy. Uh, they wanted a guy next door to do, send the telegrams or write the letters, and then they complain the next day. I don't know how your people are there up in the Boston area, Jerry, but uh, uh, I, I'm just about giving up on my people down here. Well, about uh, quarter to four, I had the same attitude uh, that... Uh uh, perhaps uh, it is a nice day for the first day in six weeks around here in the afternoon. You would expect, uh, you know, the people would be out. Boston is crowded downtown today, so maybe there aren't as many people at home. But I did get a big response yesterday. We had the um, uh, vice, uh, chair, vice president of Common Cause on today. They are in favor of the pay raise, but with certain ethical standards linked to the pay raise. So what I'm indicating to you is that you've got to get people in New York just 5,000 people. That isn't... How many uh, listeners do you have in your, uh, this portion of the day, Bob? 5,000 would be a very small percentage uh, based on what the listenership is supposed to be with several hundred thousand, Jerry. So uh, we're not really asking for much. And what have, what have you gotten in the first couple of hours in New York? Uh, we have no count. We've just gotten a lot of people calling me, telling me that they would respond, telling me that they would send the messages, or in some cases telling me they already had, which is a surprise. It's yep. I only went on at 205 and talked about it for the first time. Yeah, Bob, we may be able to get the speaker on the phone momentarily. Would you like to ask him a couple of questions? Well, if you get him on the phone, I'd love to, but right now I uh, have some other things to talk about, Jerry. So oh. if you'll forgive me, uh, I'm going to step aside here. And, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, he went back to his local programming there for the moment. He, they've got the business to do as well, and we'll, we'll take a break here as well, here on WMEX 1510, Bob Grant in New York on WMCA Radio. He's telling his folks the same thing we're telling him here in Boston, and we'll be back in a moment. Hi, this is Doug Cooper. Join me this Saturday morning at 9. I'll be talking with economist John Slack about the state of the nation, right here on WMEX Radio 1510. WMEX is saying a lot for Boston. 426 2030. 426 2030. 426 All right, let's talk about Sozio here for a moment. Um, let's see if I have this. Uh, I'll find it in a minute, folks. Don't go away. Oh, there it is. Sozio Warehouse Sale at Revere Route C1. You thought I had lived everything, right? Major appliances, television, refrigerators, dryers, washers, dishwashers, stereo, color TV, 1976 closeouts, floor samples, new in cartons, discontinued models and demonstrators at Sozio Warehouse Sale. RCA and Whirlpool Warehouse Sale at Sozio Revere Route C1. Now 19-inch XL 100 color TV portable, $359. RCA console color track, 25-inch now at $559. Whirlpool dryer, two-door, $300. $179, all RCA and Whirlpool on sale in the warehouse during this gigantic Sozio Warehouse sale, Revere only. Follow the searchlights in the sky to Sozio Warehouse, Route C1. The sale is on right now through Saturday. We know a special way to live that only comes when you're willing to give a little more than you must, trying to earn someone's trust. Avis gives you a big choice in cars and in places to rent them. Worldwide, our car rental fleet numbers over 100,000. That includes economy class cars, compacts, four-door sedans, luxury cars, station wagons, and a new sportsman wagon. That's real vehicle variety. And in the continental United States alone, there are over 1,200 locations where you can rent one of these Chrysler engineered or other fine cars. Just call Avis toll-free 800-331-1212. Avis gives you more than all kinds of cars and all kinds of places. People who are constantly trying harder to make things easier for you. Keep on trying, Avis. We try harder, Avis. Avis, we don't know another way. 
Hi, Jerry Williams back again. We are, uh, what do you got now? All right. All right, hello. Yes, hi, Bob. You have the speaker. Uh, wh is, what time will the speaker be on? Is he going to call back moment momentarily? He's going to be calling back, Bob. He's uh, in his office in uh, Boston. As a matter of fact, that's where we caught him. Let me just ask you this question, Bob. What is the reaction you're getting in New York? Well, the reaction is uh, some people are uh, absolutely, uh, completely shocked by all of this. I guess they weren't reading the newspapers. Uh, of course, in all fairness to the people, uh, this really hasn't been given much uh, prominence in the press. No, it has not. And uh, some people uh, don't like the sneakiness of it. Uh, most people are opposed to the raise anyway, but uh, above all, they agree with us that uh, at the very least, the men should be stand up, the men and women should be s stood up and counted. So uh, that's, that's their concern. Uh, I'll tell you something else that we've been talking about concerning congressmen, and that is uh, the latest in, uh, in their double talk. You know, they used to say they took vacations or they took recesses. Now they call it working in the district. And they're going to have a period of working in the district, and some of them are going to go with Congressman Phil Burton of California, taking a junket to the Virgin Islands. And they're going to study a constitutional convention down in the Virgin Islands, Jerry. I couldn't think of a nicer place to, to study it. Yeah, except for one thing. There is no constitutional convention going on. There has been a date set for some time in the future, but there's none going on now. So maybe they're going to... Uh, use a time machine or something when they get down there. By the way, they're taking their wives. Uh, so, uh, Jerry, I don't know how many of your congressional delegation were re-elected this past November. 96% nationwide, according to statistics. And people call this program and complain, and yet they turn right around and vote the incumbents back in. Now, I'm not saying that all incumbents are rascals. There are some men who I think are sincere, who really want to serve, who believe in public service. But uh, there are more who I think are just there for what they can get. What do you think? Yes, I uh, listen, I'm not anti-Congress or anti-politician. I just think that on this very important matter, here we are in the midst of winter. The president is asking us to make all sorts of sacrifices. Turn down the heat, do this, do that. People are in debt, uh, up in New England anyway, and certainly out through the Midwest with respect to fuel prices. Everybody's asking us to sacrifice. And then on the other hand, we see this happening of, you know, the $13,000 increase, another 5 to 7% in October, uh, you know, on another increment. And uh, that's not a sacrifice. I mean, if you want to be symbolic, man, just don't eliminate limousines. You know, really be symbolic by doing it. And I'm uh, unhappy that the, the tactics and method is what, uh, what, what, de what I deplore. Uh, if you want the raise, hey, listen, do it openly. Open and above board, be recorded so that a guy running next year can say he voted for the pay raise or he did not vote for it. And just record yourself, that's all. It's not asking too much, is it? Jerry, do you get much pressure from the politicians in that area? They, I know you're very outspoken. Do you ever get them nervous enough to uh, call your boss or anything like that? Oh, occasionally they call the boss. But, you know, I, I think they're now used to the idea of radio talk shows. Even the president of the United States is going to do a radio talk show. That's right, but it's going to be very heavily screened, I understand. And, of course, Walter Cronkite will really permit no remonstrances. I'm sure that uh, we're not going to have people who are going to... Uh, really give it to the president, uh, although he's been in office a short time. I'm sure somebody's going to have something to complain about. Uh, what are your views on Well, my feeling, I called CBS to let me do the show. <laughs> uh, wanted somebody who was, uh, you know, schooled in radio talk, and I think that the uh, pros and cons of that radio talk idea is a good idea. You, obviously, you've had many politicians on the air. It's, a gr it's probably the, radio talk is probably the greatest forum in the world. Because if you go... On television, they give you about eight minutes and see you later. But radio talk, you'd have a guy on for one or two hours or three hours if, if necessary. Uh, but I think uh, that the uh, caller should be, give, be given an opportunity to talk to the president for, you know, and converse with him, not just ask a question and disappear into the night. Well, I dread a whole, a whole sequence of self-serving answers. That's what I dread. And if uh, President Carter doesn't do it, I'll be pleasantly surprised. What's your relationship with uh, President Carter, if you don't mind my asking? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tenuous, to say the least. I know that during the campaign you were very outspoken, and there were rumors and innuendos about uh, uh, his displeasure with uh, uh, your conduct, but uh, I don't think you were terribly frightened. I think you saw somewhere that there's a First Amendment, right, Jerry? That's right. Uh, uh, Bob, um, uh, did you get response in the first couple of hours you were on the air with respect to uh, wires and telegrams and communications? Anybody, is it, th does there seem to be any momentum gathering? 
I can't really tell at this time whether there is. I know a lot of people have called, talked to my producer, and uh, asked where they should write. So I'm going to uh, ask you to repeat that address again, Jerry, if you will. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, I just got this message from uh, a Congress <laughs> Congress Congressman O'Neill's office. They're not very cooperative. Uh, somebody did hang up on our producer Jack, and uh, they'll, may maybe they'll call back later. They're they're happy with us uh, when when we uh, are, have the office being phoned and on uh, other matters, but not on this particular matter. Now I'm asking people in New York City again just to do this: ask Speaker O'Neill. He is the sole person that can bring the issue of a congressional pay raise to a vote. That's all, just a vote. And you can, in New York, call 9627111 for a public opinion wire or mailgram, 15 words or less is two bucks, or a letter. But let me once again stress the urgency of the timing, because the timing is most important. It, I think Wednesday is the date when it will just slip by, become law, and nobody will be recorded unless there are 5,000 messages on the Speaker's desk come Monday morning. And the Speaker's address is Speaker of the House, Thomas P. O'Neill, House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., 20515. And if they uh, want to send a mailgram with a special uh, political rate, they can call 9627111 in the New York area. That's right. Well, Jerry, I'm going to have to leave you now. Well, you sound okay to me, Bob. And uh, uh, let's, let's check back with you next week and see how uh, this thing turned out, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. If you like, uh, give us a call. I uh, sure love hearing from you. Great. Thanks a million. Thanks to all the folks at WMCA who are listening, and I, I hope uh, this thing will catch on. I'm doing some other radio programs, one in Chicago, all radio talk shows, to, to, to marshal just those letters. And if the speaker ignores them, well, he ignores them, but we made an effort. We, I always like to hold out a little bit of hope. Well, Jerry, I think you're doing a great job, and thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Bye-bye. Bob Grant in New York on uh, WMCA Radio. We'll take your calls and comments in a moment. We thought we'd get the speaker, but we're not. Traffic on the Southeast Expressway, heavy in both directions. Outbound stop and go from the South Station Tunnel to the Mass Avenue Interchange. Inbound from the tunnel to the Mass Avenue area. Starrow Drive and Cambridge Parkway both backed up to the Longfellow Bridge. The Sumner Tunnel is backed up to the Airport Street on-ramp. The Callahan Tunnel also shows slow driving. But shouldn't we have helicopter noise at this point? The Central Artery bogged down on both sides of that highway. Morrissey Boulevard has a slight delay by the Freeport Street on-ramp. That's traffic from WMEX News and open lines now at 426-2030, and there are plenty of them. Wake up, America! W-M-E-X For New England This season, TV 38 is what's brewing. That's Fields. He's over the line now with a threat with Littell. Goes for the shot. He scores! Grab her! Moving in on the line. If your goal is action, you'll find it in every Bruins game. And TV 38 is bringing you nearly every Bruins game this season. At home and away. Jean Rattel. Gilles Gilbert, Brad Park, Terry O'Reilly, Jean Rattel, and the whole Bruins team will provide the color. And Johnny Pearson and Fred Cusick will team up for the commentary. The Boston Bruins. This year, they're the greatest show on ice, and they're shown only on TV 38. For the best shots in hockey, tune in tomorrow night at 8 for chilling action with the Montreal Canadiens face off against the Boston Bruins. Yes, sir! TV 38, it's what's brewing. Now back to me. Oh, boy, I'm exhausted already. It's 427. We have a news break coming up in a couple of minutes. Commercial drapery and carpet, 77 North Washington Street, just around the corner from the Boston Garden. A slashed all prices, 25%. Recent storms have created a surplus in fine luxury, high-quality name-brand carpeting that must be sold now. Now is the time to select... That elegant carpeting and only from commercial drapery and carpet, all name brands have been reduced 25%, so get there. Ample parking, open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday to Saturday, commercial drapery and carpet, 77 North Washington Street, around the corner from the Boston Garden. If you can't get there, call 523-8322 for information. 8, uh, 523-8322. Oh, boy, I'm going at a rapid pace here. I want, just want uh, Jack, who's been trying to put all these people together, to tell me what happened at Speaker O'Neill's office. I just don't know, and I'm not, I hope I'm giving the accurate information. Okay, Jerry, we spoke with Speaker O'Neill's office as we've been trying to get him for the past two days, and we were just lucky enough to catch him in, but we were told he was in conference.